Morning, morning, everyone. How you doing? Right there, well. Yes, I'm just chilling. Just gonna take a quick walk down to the house. Uh, got some things to do, but uh, while I'm at it, I thought uh, I'd have a quick chat with the world and see how people are. And then um, I just wanted to talk about something. Excuse me. Just wanted to talk about something that I found quite interesting that popped up the other day in the um, in the Twitter sphere, <laughs> as I like to call it. Right, and then as we know, there's been a big debate and a big conversation about, you know, Africans versus the foundation of Black Americans in America. After Tariq Nasheed asked the question of, um, you know, what have immigrants, um, or what do immigrants do for foundation of Black Americans in America, and you know, a lot of the brothers and sisters from the diaspora took his comment quite personal and um, chose to attack him and uh, Americans as well in a manner in which they then <laughs> came back with their, let's say, sense of humour and their uh, defence, in which the actual question got lost in um, a lot of mudslinging, yes? Basically, they're slagging off each other. You know what I mean? So the, the topic just got muddy, right? Um, and not much has been resolved. But what I did find interesting, yeah, was, a, was an opinion or a perspective from a lot of the brothers from the diaspora and the continent of Africa claiming that they are not black, right? Which... I thought it was quite unusual and I thought it was strange. Um, but I understand why they'd say something when I thought about it though. Yeah. And what I kind of understood was this, or what I came to think, should I say, is that if you live in a, an environment where everyone around you is of the same oriental whatever, the, the or same height or same size, they're all black or they're all white or whatever, but everyone's basically the same. The distant, right? There is no distinguishing way to say that that has an influence over how you judge that person, right? So, if everyone's black, or if everyone's white even, right, you wouldn't use that as a crutch or a crux to distinguish yourself apart from another family or another group down the road, right? So, but, however, People do find other things. So, if if colour wasn't an issue, if colour wasn't a defining factor that was that, that um, separated you from somebody else, it might be height, or it could be you know, their body size, or it could be a, the religion or their, their belief in music. You know what football team they support. Many different things that would you that that would replace. You know what would define you or what would make you distinctive from somebody else. So, for me now, as a person from the diaspora, where you can say that everyone is black, or most of the people that you associate with or are surrounded by are black, when you move into a space where this is no longer the case, right, and you're surrounded by a multitude of different ethnicities and groups of people, then to me, being black is a defining factor. It's the most e on this look. At a, not the, it's not the most most defining factor, but it's the most obvious one. Yeah. And because it's the most obvious one, I personally don't have a problem with it. Someone says that I'm black. I go for cool because when I know that when I refer to uh, white people, if I walk into a room and I'm surrounded by a lot of white people, I call them white people. Yeah, I'm not sure as a white person, if you were to try and pick someone out of a crowd and it was the guy standing on the third, you wouldn't say, oh, that guy over there, the most easiest thing to kind of like qualify them would be, oh, see the black guy over there in the corner? Da, da, da. Yep, that's the one I'm talking about. Same way I would do it, as in reference to anybody else. It could be the Indian bloke, yeah, in a crowd of people, the Indian bloke over there standing two to the left, him. Right, so colour in my in that sense to me isn't really an issue. Yeah. It's how people are treated, right? 
It's how people get treated because of this, where the problem lies, right? So that's that. Now, that led me to start thinking about why is it that they'd be so adamant to argue or to make the case that they are not black? Um, and that's what I'm talking about, the brothers and sisters from the diaspora, for them coming from the African countries. And what I kind of thought was this. When you... And something, something that, well, to be honest, it was something that Kimmy Badalot said, right, that kind of like led me on this path. What it is, is that when you, um, for a lot of people from Africa, the truth is, yeah, and it's going to sound a little bit harsh, but the truth is, when they see white people, their perspective or their image of white people going back through representation, through media, and for what white people have seemingly and I put air quotes on that, the good they've done for black people, it seems that, or for the African people that is, it seems that they believe that when they go into these white spaces, this is how all white people are, or this is how, you know, this is what white society is like. But then when they actually get there, right, they found this not to be so. But the problem is, rather than ask the other black people who are already there, what's the situation? So for example, let's say that you're, uh, you're coming from um, Ghana or something like that. You move to America or you move to Europe and you see how black people are treated in a certain way compared to white people. And then you wonder to yourself, well, as far as I'm concerned, when I, when I, when I watched the news or when I saw it on TV or I saw it in a paper, it was, you know, so-and-so came over to us and brought loads of money from Live Aid and donations and they built a school and they built a this and they built a that, right? So how is it when I've gone into their actual environment now, they treat me differently, you know what I mean? So in that aspect now, they've gone into Europe, they've gone into America, the white people aren't ex exactly as they believe them to be or percept, perceive them to be. And now what you find is that rather than ask the fellow black person that looks like them, why is it that these white people are treating me like this? You know, for example, why are the race soldiers, you know, kneeling on your neck and... <laughs> um, so quick to run through your house and um, you know shoot you on sight and stuff like that or charge you or you know just treat you harshly when it comes to punishment anyway rather than ask the black people that they ask the white people that they consider to be the savior and the white person will tell them or the white powers of being, I'm not, when I say white person, I'm just using that in general time, certain specific groups of the white people, they will tell them, yes, well, you know, it's because black people are lazy, or it's because black people are all thugs and drug dealers, and then they've got this baby farm, uh, um, they breed um, children and don't look after their kids, and blah, 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 right? Which is the same, which, when I, when I listen to some of the debates, on the uh, Twitter space, these very same white supremacist talking points are the very same ex troping points, a uh, talking point, should I say, that they are referring to. And they say the same thing, and I'm like, well, hold on a second. You don't know that. You've just been told that by a group of people that have vitriol for black people, right? And you're a black person to them. You know what I'm saying? So, why they choose to do that now is because I think, in a way, they want to, let's say, affiliate themselves with the white group. Because of obviously, when you're coming from a, if you are coming from, let's say, a less fortunate situation, or you're coming from a, you know, a position of uh, life in which things aren't great, and you move to another country and you have all these opportunities that are supposedly where you can become everything you want to be, then obviously you're going to, go to try to associate yourself or get close to the group that can do that for you, right? But the truth is, it sounds all good on paper, but that group, for the most part, 
aren't about that. And that's just my opinion. Call me a racist, whatever you want to say, I don't care. But that's the truth, yeah? Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about all white people. Yeah, let's get that out of the way. But let's say, today is who the cap fits, let's say, yeah? So anyway, the um, brothers coming over from the diaspora, they get this wake up call and they take, they, they, I think they take either one or two directions, right? You have those that will say, well, you know what? I want to dissociate myself from black people, the westernized black people that are already here before me. I'm going to dissociate myself from that. And that's a problem because what it is, is that the white group, yeah, the white group that already have vitriol <laughs> for black people, well, they'll just see you as a black person. They want proof. And in order to prove this now, this is where you find that some of the brothers and sisters from the diaspora, and not all, but some, they will go that extra long mile, you know, to prove that they're different. So yeah, you'll hear the, I work harder. Yeah, I will study more. I will do twice as much, three times as much. I am not like them because I don't, I, because of my religion, I don't drink or I don't do this or I don't take drugs or whatever. And like I said, in order to do that, they have to prove it. And by proving it now, you know, just like in the old films, like mafia films and stuff like that, you know, you want to prove your loyalty to my crew, then you're going to have to do something strange against my opponent or my opposite. And that's what I see happening, yeah? When I see the comments and I hear all of the vitriol that some of the brothers and sisters from the continent of Africa are making about black people, West Indians and uh, families of black Americans, saying all of this stuff, I'm thinking, you do realize that white people see you the same as them, right? There is, and I'm not saying that all white people can't tell the difference between an African but <laughs> the truth is, right, from your not white, yeah, from your not white, you are other to them. And you will never be a part of their group, right? So, um, by default, that is, right? I'm not saying this is not to say that white people are all horrible. It's not to say that white people are just um, are bad minded or nothing like that. But I'm just talking about society in general. And you could argue the same thing going the other way. You know what I mean? You know? There are certain people within the Indian community that would shun at their daughter marrying a white man or uh, some people in the black community in the West Indies. Now, where they say, well, well, maybe not so much in the West Indies, they're still, because they, they also still suffer from a lot of Stockholm Syndrome, to run through you. <laughs> Which, uh, that was the point I was going to make, yeah. I call it the, the Stockholm Syndrome effect, you know what I mean? Because, like I said, when you're in, when you're in love with your uh, oppressor and you see them as a greater good, yet they're going to still treat you horribly, yeah, that's an issue there, yeah. And while we're on the topic, as I'm talking, I thought, well, might as well add this in. It's a nice day, it's a nice walk. This whole notion of um, look what we've done for you, and that's the coming from the European perspective or the English perspective, the white perspective, whatever. You know, talking about how you know if it wasn't for us, we come to your country, we bring you civilization, we bring you infrastructure and education, and we bring you medicine and stuff like that. Right? <laughs> now, you agree or not agree, right? You might hate me for saying this, but look, the truth is, that's a lot. I just see that as a lot of bullshit, right? Why I say bullshit? I say it like this, right? The Europeans come to the continent of Africa and they say they're going to build a clinic to help the people with malaria and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, they'll build a clinic, all right. But what the truth is, yeah, all the people and the patients in that hospital or in that clinic now become what I would say test subjects and guinea pigs. Because while they're testing, while they're maybe curing and curing malaria as a side note or as a, you know, as a, what do you call it? Um, oh, I can't remember the word. But, you know, as, as a reason, right? 
they're also going to be testing all kind of drugs at pharmacies. Also. Let's see what this drug does. Let's see what this drug does. Let's try it on these people. Yeah, we all saw that. Because we all saw that in um, when they came up with the first sets of vaccines. And that French doctor said, yes, we've come up with an idea for a vaccine and we're going to go to Africa and test it. And <laughs> we all kind of saw the kind of heat that he got for that. And then they had to stop um, backpedaling, right? Okay, so, okay. Infrastructure. They say, oh, yes, we civilised Africa because we brought infrastructure. Yeah, we build airports. We're going to build um, buildings and stuff like that. Yeah, similar to like the Great Railway in India, the Express Rail, yeah? Oh, they'll help you build a train, and they'll let, even let you ride it. But the train wasn't for you, right? <laughs> that train was so that they could take the resources out of the country at their ease and expense, and also put you in debt for it, because they're going to get you to build it and then charge you to ride it. <laughs> and then, um, what was the other one I came up with? Um, oh, yeah, education. Now, this one's a quite important one to both of you. Because, yeah, the, um, the idea or the notion that they're building schools to, let's say, bring democracy and civilise people and show them how, you know, how it's done, this is how the Western done, and this is why we're so successful. To me now, that's just another ruse, again. Because what they're doing is, and like I said, I base this on something that Kimmy Badenoch said when she talked about CRT in history, right? She said this that what she was taught in school about slavery is that prior to the Atlantic slave trade and after the Atlantic slave trade, which means that she was taught about the slavery and how African people and they um, used slavery, um, they actually wouldn't even slavery, it was more like an indentured servitude in which they didn't have a criminal system in which you went to prison. But what would happen is that you'd pay off your crimes or you'd pay off any um, thing bad that you did through labor right so by doing that now um this is how you paid off your crime now she said that that's what she was taught prior to the atlantic slave trade oh, man, there's a power in that car there boy and then she was talking about how um she was taught what happened at the end of slavery in which was basically when the Europeans and Wilberforce and all them, man, they put an abolishment to slavery. Therefore, you know, they technically ended slavery in their eyes or their per projectional perspective. Now, again, the issue with this is now, if this is what you're taught, what you're indoctrinated into believing is that your brother, the person that looks like you, is your enemy. And this white group over here, these are your saviors. That's what you're teaching. And it's like, for example, I could go to West Indies. I talked to my grandparents about what they were taught in school. And you believe, believe it or not, <laughs> they probably know more about the Queen and Britain than they know about their own land. Because that's what they were taught. They were given an English or British education system. Yeah. In mean, which they learned maths and, less, um, maths and English and the language and stuff like that. But what they also have learned is that their history and who their um, who they need to be thankful for is this specific group. You know what I mean? Oh. But anyway, that was my uh, thought for the day. I was going through this little walk. I'm, I'm at my destination now, so uh, I'm going to call it off here. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm out. Peace.